I'm fitting this lecture in between a couple of other lectures because we have a little bit more that we can talk about with regard to the deformation gradient. So we defined our deformation gradient Fij as partial of xi i with respect to xj, and this deformation gradient is a second order tensor. And so we did a little bit of work with it, and we decided to simplify things a little bit by using the same coordinate system for the original and the deformed body, the material or the spatial, the Lagrangian or the Eulerian system. But we really don't have to do that. We could have, say, a very nice, well-defined, at right angles, x, y, z, x1, x2, x3 coordinate system in the material description, and even the space itself can be warped. The coordinate system can be warped. Psi 1, Psi 2, and Psi 3 can be kind of curvy, as I've shown in this picture. So we don't have to use things in the same coordinate system, although it's going to make our life a little bit easier here in the beginning. Well, there's a special name for tensors that kind of exist in two different types of coordinate systems, two different spaces, if you will. And these are also known as two-point tensors. So let's write a little bit of that down as well. So if we work in large deformation mechanics, or another word for that is finite deformation, then we need to be a little bit more careful in our discussion. Okay, so there may be times when we're going to come back and revisit this issue of two-point tensors. But for now, we're not going to, not going to encumber ourselves with that at this point. One of the things I'm hoping to do with this class is to get into a little bit of uh, hyperelasticity, some, some rubber-like materials. And at that point, we may get back into this deformation gradient term in a little bit more detail and uh, treat it as a two-point tensor. Now, there's something else that we can do with this deformation gradient. Obviously, it's got some something to do with deformation. It's a deformation gradient. It's the amount of um, the rate of change of that deformation. So places where we have more deformation gradient would probably be things where the strain is changing. It's not constant in those, those places. One of the things I like to do, and I'll see if I can make a video of this, one of the things I like to do in class is to bring in a Nerf football. It uh, kind of looks like one of these shapes I've been drawing. I can take and I can squeeze it and I can really deform it. And we can see pretty quickly where the deformations, the rates of change of how these points move, where those rates of change are very significant, are the same places where we have a lot of things going on in that deformed body. We have a lot of what we think of kind of intuitively as deformation or strain going on in, in those spots. Well, there's some things we can do with this deformation gradient. We can do something called a polar decomposition. And uh, let's talk about what that means. Again, it's not something that we'll get into right away, um, but we're going to talk about something called uh, stretch tensors and rotation tensors. So we've defined our final positions, our points, xi sub i, based on our initial positions and their displacement. So xi sub i is equal to x sub i plus u sub i. Then <clears throat> if we want to find the gradient of that, we would take the partial derivative of xi i with respect to x j. We get our chronic or delta i j plus our partial derivative of displacements u i with respect to x j, which I'll note here again in that comma notation. If you've taken a class in linear algebra, 
you may have discussed something called polar decomposition. It also appears in continuum mechanics. Uh, this is not a complete class in continuum mechanics, so we're just hitting some of the highlights. So we can use something called the polar decomposition theorem. to write that this deformation gradient tensor F can be either written as something called R times U, likewise could be written as V times R, where these are representing uh, second order tensors. You can think of them as matrices if you need a physical description of them. Uh, we're going to get into, again, uh, a more exact definition of a tensor here in just a little bit. But what R is, is called the rotation tensor. And you see U, if we write it this way, F is equal to R U, it's sitting to the right of the rotation. It's called the right stretch tensor. And when we write it the other way, F is equal to V times R. The V, since it's sitting to the left of R, V is the left stretch tensor. This is fairly common notation for these uh, terms here. So from a physical point of view, we have this deformation gradient is equal to a rotation times a stretch, or it's equal to a stretch times a rotation. So again, think of my Nerf football. I can take and I can rotate it in space and then squish it, or I can take it and squish it, or stretch it, and then rotate it in space. The rotations are the same in either way, but because the order of the operations are a little bit different, the U and the V are going to have different terms in them. They're, they are different tensors. The order of the operation of stretching and rotating gives you different uh, stretch tensors. Let's write a little bit of that down. And we talked about how we can decompose any particular uh, transformation into a rotation and a translation for rigid body motion, we can do something similar here for things that deform. We can rotate and then stretch. Or we can stretch and then rotate. Now these stretch tensors and rotation tensors have some interesting properties. We'll uh, list these out. Again, we're not proving it in this point. In some classes in continuum mechanics, you will get into some of these proofs. Um, but we're going to write some of these identities down. For one thing, the stretch tensors are symmetric. So if we have the stretch left stretch tensor U, that's equal to its own transpose. And likewise for V, the rotation tensor, well, its transpose is equal to its inverse. So there's some manipulations we can do with this. If we know, and, and I, I wrote down my terms wrong here. Pardon me for just a second. Up here at the top, I put my terms in the wrong order. Let me fix that here real quick. <clears throat> 
rotation and then stretch, or stretch and then rotation. Okay, so the manipulations we can do is we can say that RU, since that's equal to VR, if we post multiply the left hand turn by the transpose, then we would have RU, R transpose, equal to V R R transpose. And since the R R transpose is the identity tensor, then we can write R U R transpose is equal to V. And likewise, we can write U is equal to R transpose V times R. And so as we've discussed, the deformation gradient itself is some sort of measure of strain. We can be a little bit more formal with this and we can define something called the Cauchy strain tensor. We'll call it CIJ, that's a typical notation. It's equal to FKI, FKJ, where these are two deformation gradient terms, or with our partial derivative notation, partial of xi k with respect to xi partial of xi k with respect to xj, where we are using our summation notation. And this is also a second order tensor. So we may visit the Cauchy strain tensor again later uh, when we get into these hyperelastic materials. Right, well, next up, we're going to take a look at something called the green St. Fanat strain tensor. And again, as just a way to keep in mind, there are lots of different ways to think about strain. Uh, we can look at the formed coordinates. We can look at the original coordinates. And uh, we'll give some examples of, of that. So uh, it just kind of depends on what your perspective is. And the values, the meaning of that strain tensor will be a little bit different the way you interpret it. But in the end, you kind of end up with the same state. The body is in its deformed configuration. It just depends on how you want to describe it. Okay, so that's it for this little interstitial lecture. And we'll pick up the next one, uh, again, doing a little bit more heavily involved uh, tensor algebra.